I think one of his best things right now is he really doesn't know how to. The word is not cheat. It's uh, he, he hasn't got to that point where he's been last and said the heck with this stuff. I'm gonna feel terrible the next day and just lope around there. You know he has he has, all he knows is here they come. I gotta go. <laughs> so I think that's still a good thing with him. You know what I'm saying? As horses run, they'll start to get smart and say you know this is for the birds. So. <laughs> And that's our job to sweeten them up and try to get them where they try all the time. But yeah, he's he doesn't know any of that. He's gonna yeah, he's gonna yeah, he's gonna lay it out. Well, was that yeah. part of the motivation of running him for sixteen? Um, that you wanted to start him off on a positive experience, or is it just that, that? I mean that, and also you know it, it wasn't showing a lot in the morning. Um, and like I said, I tell people I really didn't think I'd lose the horse. You know, it was the end of the year. And if service is running for 16, West has got a ton of horses. He must not be showing much. I had an apprentice on him. You know, I usually ride Irad or T. So he really, I didn't think as a claimant trainer, which I am, that he, he was that attractive. I, I, I really didn't think I'd lose him. A lot of people kicking themselves now. I called as soon as he had the wire. Any claims? <laughs> <laughs> and the West were fine with it because isn't uh, New Year's Day like somewhere else now? That was part of the reasoning. You know, he got sold. Nobody wanted to breed to him. So he got sold to Brazil, I believe, because I did get a call from Brazil. We're rooting for you. You're, you know, <laughs> you're our idol. <laughs> He's got to win. But, uh, yeah, it was. that was nobody. Pre the mayor sold for 11000 so it wasn't. Like he was, you know, a full brother to somebody that was a champion or something. I was very careful to handpick his next two races. And the starter, uh, I told Ramir, you know, the last time he won by 10, there's no reason for that. All you're doing is, is milking the horse. So he, he won well in hand. Ramir come back and said, Jay, I, I know I'm an apprentice, but I said, this is a stake horse. So for what it's worth, Ramir was spot on. Well, when did he start thinking he's grade one and beyond? When he won that day and Ramirez come back, I called the stakes coordinator. Uh, there was a race and I don't want to say that day, but I'd let them know that there was a starter in the book and if I got to run him, the race went and I got to run him and he ran like, we thought like again like that, I, that would be a horse view for the Florida Derby. They're not really looking whether I'm two to one, five to one, they want another horse. And the race went and we ran and then the- So even went. after he broke his mane for 16, yeah, after his Florida Derby. No, after his second race. Okay, when he won the. I was thinking a little bit Florida Derby that running back because he was still eligible for the starter, so I could, you know, he was beating up on those horses and you know I could have had three under his belt and that's a, you know the race went we ran him he's three for three on the track and I called Louis Sai as his agent when I read opted for a different direction and he said I'm open I said really I, you know he's leading rider I'm like you're open really I said. You're not now, so that was another plus. You know, things start falling in. You're like, man, geez, I got Louis Saez. I'm three for three on the track. What's the downside? Uh, I mean, his, his works have been like your normal works, but maybe not normal for derby horses coming up. Yeah. Right. Comfortable with how he's doing? He went a little slow the last two breezes that I wanted. I think Eddie got a little uh, nervous. I had a radio on him, but I don't know if he wasn't hearing me good. I think I can't see fitness being an issue because those are all, they're, they're slow miles, but they're miles. Right. And by the time he gets pulled up, Mike Welsh will tell you, mile eighth, mile and a quarter. So he's got he's got plenty of air in him. It's not, if he gets beat, it's not gonna be because he's not fit. Do you have any perspective or idea or what you're expecting on Saturday? It seems like nobody really knows what to do with this horse from a handicap perspective. Like I was, I was saying, he doesn't really know how to just go out there and lope around. I, I'm really not expecting that. I think he'll try if it's fifth or fourth or third or win, whatever it is. I, I think he's just that uh, he just doesn't know about. <laughs> Can't wait to get back to the barn and eat. <laughs> so, John, give you any tips on handling all this? Yeah, he said, don't come Monday or Tuesday. Come as late as you can. <laughs> so, we, that's what were you we doing did. when Smarty was here, when you were here with your brother then? Were you working? Were you? Yeah, and I was at a full barn, and I wasn't going to come, and Natalie said, geez, we got tickets and plane tickets, and I'm going to lose all that, so I had my toes in the ground, but I came. Thank God we did. We had a blast. <laughs> and, uh, man, you I were here for a day or two or three? Or? Uh, we flew out Sunday morning. I remember walking in the airport, and all you could see was everybody's head down on the front page of the paper with Smarty Jones. And then uh, when I got back to Monmouth, they had a big sign on my barn, Go Smarty, and it wasn't my horse. And then, you know, we went to Pimlico. That was great. Pisa putting up the $5 million, And then 
Hot Springs had put up a million because it was their 100th year from anybody can win the Arkansas Derby. It was, it was, it was samurai. It was terrific. I always felt God had a plan. I said this in Florida, uh, that we'd be the first brothers to win the Derby. It might not be this year, but I'm, you know, that'd be, that's something I always thought maybe we could, we could shoot for. Do you find yourself in general getting the higher quality horse? So you, you know, you'll get your year by year yeah. earnings. Yeah. It seems like last two and a half years, yeah. definitely. What was picked the, my stats way up. With, what was uh, the when I picked point? up Gary and Mary West, and I picked up Mike Dub, leading owner in New York. That was that really solid. You know, good horses run one where you run aggressive. And do you think the way the draw shake shook out with um, Cassie's horse, War of Will, drawing the rail? Now he's it sounds like he's going to go. That you won't be on the lead. I hope he gets away good. You know, because if he doesn't get away good. I mean, I just would, I would, I would be, I'd make me happy if he got away good and we could, I'm far enough out, I think, I think Louis could do what he want. I, when Jerry Bailey came by this morning, he said, what do you think about the post? I said, I'm, I'm asking you, what do you think? He said, oh, I think you got a great post. So. Did the Florida Derby surprise you at all? I mean, you knew, when the horse was unbeaten, he'd been very impressive, but it's still, you know, jumping yeah, into state. Yeah, so. it surprised me. Yeah, but Gary and I had talked. We thought there might be a slow pace after the Fountain of Youth. They went 45 and change. So I think everybody kind of overreacted this race. Even the, the Mott horse was in behind. So we got lucky. It was 48.98. I mean, he's, you're supposed to, if you're anything, you're supposed to kick away walking, you know, going that slow early. And he came home the last three eights. We could pass like 35 and 10. Yeah, but he might not have the luxury of going a half and 49 or, or even if he's laying third and they go 22, 46. I mean, so I'll leave a lot to Louie. I don't think he has to be on leave. For sure he doesn't have to be on leave. What about this, Wesky?